Africa, the amazing continent, is one of the most diverse places in the world, with different languages, cultures, food, topography, ranging from desert to rainforest to the savannah, and amazing waterfalls. We can go on and on and on. In addition to that, the people are also amazing. And I've been very fortunate that throughout my professional career as an interview and career coach, that I've been able to work with many Africans over those years. Uh, and in saying that, however, one thing that I have seen is that amazing professionals from Africa had moved to the UK or the US, and I would say the anglicized world, and really struggled to, to land a job, particularly a job that is reflective of their ability and capability. And obviously, as an interview coach, many of these issues are issues that I help my clients work with. And from that, I've come across a number of kind of common challenges that professionals from Africa can face. And today we're going to address that and hopefully, as well as addressing and highlighting what those issues are, look at some solutions as well. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that the interviewing process is so different. Um, in many other parts of the world, and this doesn't just include Africa, uh, but it can include the Middle East, the Far East, Asian subcontinent, so on and so forth, is that the interviewing process is only one small percentage, we could, we could say between 20 to 25% of the overall hiring decision-making process. So in Africa, for example, if you're applying for a job, they will be assessing not only your interviewing skills and your performance at the interview, but they'll also they'll be looking at where you've studied, how long you've worked in a job, where you've worked. They might also contact people from your organization that they might know to find out a little bit about you and if you are somebody who's capable. And then you have the actual interview itself, constituting maybe only 20% or 20 to 25% of the overall process. And so usually the interviews tend to be more of a formality, they tend to be more straightforward and less of a challenge. However, in the UK, in the US, especially for the big corporates, sometimes what many Africans or many people, not just Africans, but people from different parts of the world realize is that everything relies on the interview process. You could be a graduate from Oxford or Cambridge or Harvard. You could have worked for Google or some of the best companies in the world. And it doesn't matter. Everything is reliant on the interview. And so in many cases, they fall short because they just don't have the breadth of experience of interviewing in this particular way and therefore struggle to find the jobs that are reflective of their actual ability and capability. So that's the first thing to keep in mind, that the interviewing process is very different. So now that we have that out of the way, I want to come on to the actual first issue, uh, which of course doesn't affect every African, because Africa is very diverse, and, but this one I've seen does affect many, which is talking too fast. Now, particularly if you're from Nigeria, that's going to be a bit of a challenge and less of a challenge, say, if you're from Egypt or from Algeria. And this is partly due to the fact that Arabic is a very is a language that's spoken from the throat. So anything that's from the throat, you generally can't speak fast. But languages that are more from the lips, it can result in someone talking very fast. And you not only find this uh, in Nigerians, particularly when you speak English, you can speak extremely fast. And the fact is you are speaking perfect English right? It's just the accent and the speed at which you're speaking at, the person or the interviewer who's listening at that time hasn't synchronized with your pattern of talking. I mean, the same problem can occur from people from Liverpool. They could go to an interview and if they talk in their Scouse accent at their Scouse speed, even someone like myself will struggle to grasp everything that they're saying. And so that's something that we need to address, especially when you're anxious or nervous at an interview, you can sometimes just launch in to speaking and then speak far too quickly and the interviewer can't keep up with you and not understand everything that you're saying. So how do you fix that? There's a really easy fix and it's simple. You open your mouth more. So when you speak, 
you speak with your mouth open a little bit more. So you're not speaking from the lips like this, but you're opening your mouth more. And that, what that does, it's a mechanical issue. It forces you to speak slower. So automatically you'll find by just simply opening your mouth more, you will speak slower. And this is something that you're gonna need to do in your day-to-day -day life. You're gonna need to practice it on a daily basis just to slow things down for yourself. Super important. The second area that we need to focus on is what I call relatability. And what I mean by that is, sometimes when you're working in Africa, you could be working for an amazing organization. For example, there was one person that I coached who worked for one of the largest retail, online retail companies in Africa. It was the equivalent of the Amazon of Africa. But guess what? No one in the UK actually knew what that company was or what they did. And so in his case, he was struggling when he went to interview and he shared his experiences with this company because the interviewer didn't know that this was the Amazon of Africa. They didn't really appreciate what he had done and the complexity of the task and the role that he had there. And so here, what's very important is to make sure that they can understand where you've worked or where you've studied. So for example, if you've worked at an amazing university, say this is one of the leading universities in your country, it's one of the top five. When you, if you've worked for a really good firm, mention this is a leading firm that has clients such as X, Y, Z. All of a sudden now, by saying those things and making what you've, the experiences that you've had in Africa, which to the interview at that moment in time are extremely abstract, they become real. And then they appreciate what you've actually done and then they can visualize how you were doing the job and also then how you'll be able to do the job within their organization. So thirdly, it's the interview culture itself in the way that the interview is conducted and the way that you carry yourself within the interview. Now, in many cases, in various parts of the world, including many places in Africa, you'll find that the relationship between staff and their managers is a very formal one. You might refer to them as Mr. or Miss or Doctor. You would refer to them with their surname rather than their first name, right? And But in the UK, if your boss's name is Jane or your boss's name is Simon, you will refer to them as Simon. So that's the first thing. When you meet somebody, it's really important that you do refer to them as Simon or Jane and not with their surname. And secondly, is simple things like when you're asked the question, for example, tell me about yourself, don't start off by saying, my name is dot, 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 my name is Farhan. No, we don't do that. We dive straight into the question. So when the question comes up, introduce yourself. You can start off by saying something like, I've been working with a professional within education now, coming up to over 15 years. What drives and motivates me is making a difference and making an impact. And I would like to share with you a little bit about my experience across the last 15 years. Anyway, so on and so forth. But the point there is we're gonna dive straight in and we're not going to say those certain words, which of course, if you're interviewing in certain countries within Africa, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't get the job because it's showing a level of disrespect. By referring to your manager or the hiring manager by their first name or not introducing yourself by saying your name, but in the UK, in the US, we dive straight in. And finally, don't be disheartened and stay positive. And this is really important because sometimes when you're not used to being rejected and you start getting those rejections from the interviews, it can be very disheartening and you can lower your expectations. And it's really important that you don't do that. The way that I describe it to people is that imagine you're in a 100 meter race. Some people are starting at 99, other people are starting at the 100 meter mark and you might be starting at 101. That's just your reality, but that doesn't mean you can't win. It just means you've got to run a little bit harder and you're gonna to have to be a little bit better. And absolutely, you can do that. And so how can you do that? Well, we have an amazing online course, which is called Get Hired, which in the link below, you can click on and get a 20% discount. So if you're interested in improving your interviewing skills, try checking out our online interview training course and also maybe look at some coaching. 
So I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please press the like button because it really helps promote our video across YouTube and the other channels, uh, as well as if you want to improve your career and go further in your career uh, and generally become better at interviews, I would also then suggest maybe you subscribe to our channel because we'll have plenty more videos coming along the way. So until next time, bye-bye.